Next on Worcester News Tonight, teachers and students rally for PCB testing in Worcester. Plus, honoring a fallen officer in central Massachusetts one year after his tragic death. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Andy Madison. We begin tonight in Worcester, where the teachers union is demanding two schools get tested for PCBs, a material some feel may be linked to cancer and other illnesses. The Educational Association of Worcester chanted for more testing at Burncote and Doherty High School during a rally tonight at City Hall right before the school committee meeting. Last month, the teachers union was negotiating with the Worcester School District to allow testing at the two schools, but the two sides have been unable to reach an agreement. We spoke with a woman whose daughter was a student at one of the schools. She died from colon cancer seven years ago. She is pleading for the school to act. They need to do something about it, not wait. They said Darty's going to get a new school in two years, and then Burns out after that. What's well, going to happen in between? You know, too many children and staff and teachers could be affected by this that we don't even know about. We reached out to the school superintendent for comment, but did not hear back. A panel discussion in Worcester tonight bringing attention to the opioid crisis. The event was held at St. Peter's Parish Center in Worcester and allowed those affected by opioid abuse to tell their stories to the public. Professionals in law enforcement, healthcare, education, and youth engagement participated in the panel. Worcester County District Attorney Joseph Early Jr. says this crisis continues to affect families across the country and the community must continue to take action. We've got to keep fighting because the last five years we've had triple digits with regards to deaths in Worcester County. This affects everyone. If you go to our memorial wall on the DA's website, you can see it affects every color, every race, every creed. It's something, you know, we're, we're a society of hope and compassion, and we have to do that to help solve this problem. The district attorney's office put together that memorial wall on a website for those who have died from opioid abuse, and it is known as the Memorial Wall. Massachusetts State Trooper is being remembered one year after his death. A memorial mass was, a mass was held for Trooper Thomas Clardy tonight in Hudson. Trooper Clardy's cruiser was struck by a car on the side of the Mass Pike in Charlton last year. Police say the driver, David Naguna, had crossed three lanes of traffic. He's facing multiple charges, including driving under the influence of marijuana. Immigration and health care were among the topics discussed by U.S. Senator Elizabeth Warren during her visit in Worcester today. Our Olivia Lemon reports. A standing room only crowd at the Worcester Public Library Thursday for a question and answer session with Senator Elizabeth Warren. A lot of people did not expect Donald Trump to be president of the United States. And I'm just going to be blunt. It has changed the tools that we have to work with now in Washington. Senator Warren says her work in Washington, D.C. includes fighting for Massachusetts families, access to affordable health care, good education and improved transportation. We need to make the investments. We need a train that runs from Boston to Worcester to Springfield. Hello, you know, come on. Senator Warren says Worcester is making great progress with the addition of flights from the Worcester Regional Airport to New York. Warren says the CEO of JetBlue told her two things made him come to Worcester. He said one was the investment, the infrastructure is now state of the art, that the work was done that actually upgraded the airport that makes it work. And the second one, was how much the local community came out and supported it. Taking questions from the audience, one man asked Warren about the Affordable Care Act. Now I'm going to ask you, if you could bring it down to more of a tactical level, mm -hmm. uh, what could you advocate for to make the ACA better? And we got to find ways to get better outcomes at lower cost. And you know what that means for me? It means investment. It means investment, first of all, in medical research. The idea that Trump wants to cut medical research is just cutting off our future. A young woman studying marine biology asked the senator for advice on how she can stay positive in a male-dominated field. When I stand up and do something that's a little scary or I'm a little aggravated about uh, what others want to hush me up over, I'm not standing alone. No. I'm standing with millions of women who came before me and millions more who will come after me. Olivia Lemon, Worcester News Tonight.
For college basketball fans or fans of filling out brackets, it is that time of year again. March Madness tipped off today. It is the first round of the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament, which began at noon. The tournament features wall-to-wall -wall basketball games all day long. Here was the scene earlier today at Funky Murphy's in Worcester. The tournament is known to cause some distractions at the workplace. But those we caught up with were able to take some time away from the office to enjoy the games. There's so many games going on at the same time, so you're constantly switching from one game to another, and it's just, it's exciting. You know, you go to a bar, or you, you could watch at home, or wherever, and it's, it's very exciting to watch all the games going on, and you root for college teams that maybe your uncle went to, or your father went to, and, you know, it's a good time all around. This time of year for us is very busy with St. Patrick's Day and, you know, just after the holidays, moving into the spring season, we have the windows that we open up. It gets very busy in here, so it's really the transition period of us from winter into spring. Unfortunately, no teams from Massachusetts made the tournament this year. The first round of the tournament picks up again tomorrow. Also tomorrow, many will celebrate all things Irish for St. Patrick's Day. Here in Worcester, butcher shops are busy this week selling hundreds of pounds of corned beef, a holiday favorite for the Irish. Our Rosalind Flaherty has a closer look. Kathleen Roftus says eating corned beef on St. Patrick's Day is a family tradition. We've been doing it for years. My grandmother did it before me. Roftus was one of dozens at Fairway Beef in Worcester Thursday. She's been coming for years and picked up 15 pounds of gray corned beef. My son is living in Connecticut now, but um, he always loves this meal. He will come from anywhere to come and have the corned beef. Meat manager Paula Chance says they see a big increase in business the whole week leading up to St. Patrick's Day. He says they take 1,000 orders. People are in and out of the store buying their corned beef, cabbage, and vegetables, what they need. Fairway Beef makes their own cut of gray corned beef and brines about 6,800 pounds for this week alone. We take two whole briskets, we lean them all out, and we sew them back to back. So each piece is stitched together, a uh, point section with a flat so that everybody gets a uniform piece of meat. Catherine Murphy Simock says she gets corned beef for every holiday meal, but being Irish herself makes St. Patrick's Day more special. I think of my father and my mother and um, all the times we had as kids. Roctus says she's keeping her family's tradition alive, having a St. Patrick's Day meal on Sunday. Hopefully someone after me will keep it going too. <laughs> Rosalind Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight. A Bishop Robert McManus from the Diocese of Worcester is granting a special dispensation tomorrow. Catholics are required not to eat meat on Fridays during Lent, but the bishop says they can eat corned beef on Friday as long as Catholics perform a different penance on Thursday or Saturday to make up for it. A woman is sentenced for her role in the theft of weapons from the Worcester Armory. Ashley Bigsby got 21 months in prison after pleading guilty to several charges. Authorities say she and another person helped sell some of the 16 weapons were taken from the Armory in 2015. Two other people were also charged in the case. A Worcester businessman was in court today on charges he allegedly attacked a Muslim worker at JFK Airport in New York City earlier this year. Robin Rhodes pleaded not guilty to hate crime charges. He is free on bail. Prosecutors say he insulted then attacked a woman wearing a hijab at JFK back in January. Worcester police make an arrest in an effort to crack down on illegal activity in Maine South. Neighborhood response team was working undercover around six, the 600 block of Main Street after receiving complaints about drug dealing. Just before midnight Wednesday, police say officers saw a 19-year-old 19, 19 Joshua Andrew Jar give crack cocaine to 37-year-old Peter Santos. Both were arrested 30 minutes later in the same area. Police witnessed 62-year-old Santa Sanchez buying crack cocaine from Jose Garcia Colon. All are now facing multiple drug-related